Welcome to Barcelona for the opening round of the 2021 European Le Mans series. Now here are three reasons to follow what is set to be an enthralling season. Number one, we have a mega grid of 41 cars. Number two, a brand new LMP2 Pro-Am category has been included in the championship just to spice things up a bit. Number three, ELMS welcomes some new drivers and teams, including Formula One star Robert Kubica. Ready? Fire up the engines. Let's get the season started. The European Le Mans series is back for 2021. Bigger, better and more competitive than ever. Six races from April to October. We'll see the championships fought out tooth and nail. After a two-day prologue, the season opener is the four hours of Barcelona at the Circuit de Catalunya. If your car works here, you should be good for the rest of the year. To the Styrian Mountains for the Red Bull Ring and Round 2 in mid-May. And then to the south of France in June, the height of summer for the four hours of Le Castellet. To Italy's Temple of Speed in the Royal Park at Monza in mid-July before the 24 hours of Le Mans in August. And then the season picks up again with Round 5 at Spa-Francorchamps in mid-September and the finale four hours on the roller coaster of Portimao at the end of October. In the LMGTE category, a former European Le Mans Series champion and multiple World Endurance and Le Mans winner is back, Jimmy Bruni. Jean-Maria Bruni should be a great asset for reigning champions Christian Reed and the 77 Proton Competition Porsche. It was a long time that I was no, not doing this series. A uh, lot of things have been changed. Uh, it's very nice to, to race with, uh, with Christian, uh, especially in the car with his team. Last year was really good season for them. Uh, they won uh, the last race fighting. Uh, I hope we can do the same this year. Their main challenger among the Ferraris could well be the number 80 Iron Lynx car. Another European Le Mans Series returnee, World Endurance regular Miguel Molina. I'm really happy to be back here in the ELMS. I think it's always been a pleasure to race in this championship. And uh, yeah, last time that I was here was a good year. Uh, we, we couldn't win the championship, but we were really, really close. So we'll try to fight this year even harder to, to try to achieve the, the big goal, especially starting here in my home, play, in my home race, uh, is a special one. They'll all have to keep an eye out for the number 95 car from TF Sport. It's the first full season Aston Martin entry in ELMS since 2017. They're a really good team, really helpful. Um, I think it's going to be interesting being the only the only Aston out there. Ollie and, and Ross are, are great drivers and it, so much of this series relies upon the AM doing a good job. So that's, that's down to me to fight a bit more. I think in the early races, the, the, we just want to finish and do a good job and then hopefully progress as the year goes on. This is a complicated question. Probably in Spa. Portimao. Spa. Portimao. It's uh, Portimao. I would say Spa. Of course, we love dogs. No. Unfortunately not. I would say no. I've never seen a dog around here. 
probably yes. My dog, yes, because my dog is really nice. This is hard. That's definitely not me. Philippe Albuquerque. Oof. Very good question as well. Uh, probably me. Uh, I'll say Philip Albuquerque. Mark Lieb. Eduardo Freitas. This I know. Eduardo Freitas. Uh, Freitas. Mickey Mouse. No, Eduardo Freitas. Eduardo Freitas. If I don't say it, then he will disqualify me straight away. Freitas for sure. My name is Freitas. In my office now. No. I would say yes, you are. If it's safe. Why not? Ah, uh, no. No, no. 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 Uh, Verstappen. Guido van der Gaard. Giancarlo Fisichella. Fisichella. Guido van der Gaard, my friend. A fox. Pwah, I have no idea. I have no idea. A fox, yeah, he's a fox. It's a fox. Rapid, no? Like a lynx, something like tiger. You lose. Tricky questions and our winner, Matt Griffin. So it seems I know more about the ELMS than all the other drivers. It's too complicated, your question. Come on. That was tricky. <laughs> okay. Don't come back. <laughs>
One of this year's European Le Mans Series innovations is the introduction of a Pro-Am Championship in LMP2. It'll highlight and reward driver lineups which include one who is bronze rated, in other words, a real gentleman driver. It's a very good uh, move from the organizer to have uh, created this, uh, this series now with this category. The bronze driver lineup has been increasing since a couple of years. We are fighting at the right scale now. Among the LMP2 rookies, two well-known racing names with Pietro Fittipaldi, grandson of double F1 world champion Emerson, and Manuel Maldonado, whose cousin Pastor won the 2012 Spanish Grand Prix for Williams right here in Barcelona. This will be my, my first really endurance race here in Barcelona in the European Le Mans Series, one of the most competitive endurance, or if not the most competitive endurance championship in the world. So many LMP2 cars is going to be really great. G-Drive, uh, I met everybody uh, here this week. I never met the team before. We do our best in the weekend. I'm extremely excited for the season ahead. Um, it couldn't be better to do it with the reigning champions. And yeah, we've got a great lineup for it. You know, my teammates Job and Nico, and I'm really looking forward to the race. I think that we got a good car and uh, yeah, we've been putting a good performance and I'm sure that we can, uh, we can do a great result during the weekend. Another of our ELMS rookies is bound to come under great scrutiny as he already boasts a fantastic motorsport pedigree, ex-F1 ace Robert Kubica. I'm ready, action. This year I will be attending ELMS, so first time in the LMP2 car category. New category, new challenges, new things to discover. There is quite a big difference between the approach, racing approach, between single-seaters or sprint races, where you drive alone, and the endurance approach when you are sharing not only the cockpit, but also meetings, the way you work with the team, the way you actually you have to be much more open-minded. Definitely you are living more as a group. You are spending more time with your teammates, working all together. Uh, for the same results, for the same, let's say, goal, and, uh, and this is the biggest difference. The final goal would be to be on the podium uh, at, at some events, and I think uh, we, we are a young team, uh, we have uh, a strong lineup uh, drivers, but uh, also uh, we lack a bit of experience, so uh, I think we will need the time, and uh, for sure this year it will be a kind of learning curve. Uh, of course, the highlight of the year is uh, Le Mans. Endurance races and Le Mans uh, has been never really in my mind until a couple of years ago uh, where I uh, started uh, thinking about you know this amazing race. Uh, I think one of the biggest motorsport challenge not only as a driver but as a team. Uh, I think uh, already finishing Le Mans is, is a unique, uh, is a great achievement. Of course performing well and fighting on the top will be even better but uh, uh, I think you have to leave Le Mans to really appreciate uh, its unique atmosphere and the characteristics. So uh, it, it's looking amazing from outside, but I think uh, inside leaving it, uh, being a part of uh, active part of uh, of this weekend, it will be something special. Those new new things are always very emotional. You know, they make you feel like you you are a, again a baby, a kid. Uh, which of course it has been a long time ago I was a kid, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, but uh, but uh, you know, these moments uh, makes you feeling that uh, you are discovering a completely new world. You know, motorsport is, uh, it looks often very similar from outside, but living uh, different races, different categories is always uh, something new, something uh, uh, fascinating to learn and to discover. <laughs> Yeah.
Smell it in the burnt metal. Absurd levels. That's how they know I'm clutch like the third pedal. Words settling in chest like a jersey number. Get them out the way they gone for an early summer. With the pen and pad of Jordan with a second left. Scorching with an extra step. You swore you couldn't catch a breath. Worse than your worst nightmare. It's uh, very exciting to be part of the European Le Mans series for the first time. And I'd be lying if I said there wasn't a little bit of pressure. But, you know, um, the guys have asked me to join the team. So I'll just do the best I can. And, and hopefully it's good enough. Jimmy did a fantastic job in qualifying, so looking forward to starting from pole position in today's race, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can keep it clean and, and have a good result. Why the wire we stop shows? Even the clock knows. That's why you hear them loud from the top row. Ever since I was a snot-nosed kid with a grin, my desire to win will never stop growing. Perseverance, dedication, got the tunnel vision. We're going to be really pushing to get the uh, United Autosport Aero car on the podium. But yeah, you know, we're here to get as good a result as we possibly can. It's four hours, very, very tough racing. Lots of real strong competition. But yeah, we're going to give everything here we can. Keep your head on a swivel. They will take your spot and don't stop. Until you see your name on top, yeah. Somebody better tell them that it's game time. They build them and destroy them at the same time. At the top spot, you want to take mine. Then somebody better tell them that it's game time. Hey, 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 hey. Somebody better tell them that it's game time. happy to to clinch our first pool yesterday but uh, obviously we still have a four-hour race ahead of us uh, today I think WRT and and the two United cars will be uh, yeah the ones to, to look out for but you know with if you have some lucky calls or right calls within strategy uh, when there are safety cars or full course yellows around you know anyone can be up there so we just have to focus on our own thing really One hundred and sixty-eight days we have waited since Portimao last November. We are ready to get the 2021 European Le Mans series underway. Polman, 26 G drive, Roman Rusinov, Louis Delachaz, the 41 team WRT alongside Julian Canal, the blue colours at Panis Racing and Henrik Hedman in the white Dragon Speed car. Oh, and there's trouble behind. Cars are coming out of the final corner, accelerating hard. And there's been collisions. A couple of the United LMP3 cars and a couple of others, I'm sure, have made contact. The lights go out. We are racing here in Barcelona for four hours. The European Le Mans series opener. Louis Delachaz covers off Julian Canal on the inside line. Hedrick Hedman trying to go too wide. Two United Autosports cars in trouble. And that is a spinner in the first corner. Nico Jamar in the 32 United car on the inside. No contact, just lit up the rears and off he went. So Roman Rusinov leads for G-Drive. Louis Delachaz in second ahead of Julian Canal. Phil Hansen up to fourth from sixth ahead of the Dragon Speed car of Henrik Hedman. Let's take a look again. Everybody checking up as the leader rolls very slowly up to the line. Rusinov causing a lot of drama behind him. Drive through penalty car 26 for not respecting the race start procedures and causing collisions far back at the grid as a consequence. 
And then in turn one, watch the United car on the inside. Nico Jamma, you can see the moment he hits the throttle, spins up the rears and the car's off in the gravel. So Rusinov pulling away from Louis Delatraz. Phil Hansen for United up to third now ahead of Julian Canal. Then Henrik Hedman with Sally Yolich, the 34 car right behind. Racing Team Turkey and he's not alone. There's four or five cars there starting to queue up behind Hedman in the Dragon Speed entry. This is fantastic racing already, just moments into the season. Pit entry closed, safety car, leader slow down. Safety car, of course, to rescue Nico Jama in the 32 United car. Looks fairly undamaged, but they will lose a lot of ground because of this. And at the chicane, Sally Jolic mistiming a move or trying to back out of a move on Henrik Hedman. Turns around the Dragon Speed car. One, two, three, four, five, six of them all go off in avoidance. Jolic loses more than he would have gained. And look at that, frantically wave yellows. It's a, a roadblock in LMP3. It's going to be a long recovery drive, isn't it, now for the 32 United Autosports car, but it does look to be in one piece. A difficult start because well, the, the whole pre-grid procedure is a bit different. Uh, the warm-up lap is very slow, which means uh, at the start the tyre pressures and the tyre temps are extremely low. I feel extremely sorry for the team. There's no excuse, it shouldn't happen. I will learn for him, from it and we'll come back stronger. Safety car in the pits, green flags, green flags. Roman Rusinov leads us back to green, couldn't do his drive through behind the safety car. Louis Delatraz in second, Phil Hansen in third. Ahead of Julian Canal, then in fifth place is the cool racing entry. That car started by Antonin Borger, John Falp up to sixth position, the second G drive car. LMP3 leader further back is number two, Rob Weldon for United Autosports, ahead of Lawrence Hill for DKR and Mike Benham, pole sitter Andrew Bentley, number three, United Autosports car in fourth, holding off Nicola Maulini for cool racing. And that's as close a battle as anywhere else. In fact, he's got a bit of a queue building as well. Lead battle in GTE, Reno Mastronardi being chased by Iron Lynx teammate Paolo Ruberti in the yellow highlights number 60 car. Now these two share a car together for Iron Lynx, a Ferrari in the Michelin Le Mans Cup. In fact, they finished second in the race the day before. Now they're battling for the lead in the GTE class here. And on the inside, Paolo Ruberti slips by Reno Mastronardi. So it's a Ferrari 1-2, third place to 77 Proton Competition Porsche, the white car in the background ahead of the Iron Dames Ferrari. And here's a challenge, Ferrari on Porsche, Rodrigo Sales, JMW Motorsport, getting by Irish actor Michael Fassbender in the Proton Competition car for sixth. Louis Delatraz now setting sail after Roman Rusinov, the leader still has that drive through to serve. But Delatraz wants to take the lead anyway. They're coming up behind the TF Sport Aston Martin. Not catching it at a great place for Roman Rusinov. Delatraz is all over him. And here comes Phil Hansen. He's coming fast from behind in the United car. And the Aston steps out of the way. I think it does. Here comes Hansen. We nearly have a three way battle for the lead. Roman Rusinov doing his best to hold off Louis Delatraz. Delachaz, the winner of the virtual Le Mans 24 hours last year. Now he's got a shape up here, down the front straight for a move on the leader. Flashing the headlights. When's he going to go? He's going inside. We know he's going inside. Rusinov knows he's going inside. Moves across to cover. Doesn't quite leave the room. I think that Delachaz might have expected, but overcooks it under braking. Rusinov hoist by his own petard. So intent on being deep on the inside to stop the pass, he actually gave it away and Phil Hansen almost sneaked through as well. Looking back from the 93 Proton car, Michael Fassbender. Here comes the second place battle now. Roman Rusinov ahead of Phil Hansen and Julian Canal. And I think Delachaz will be a little cautious about the amount of room he might get from Rusinov in future. Side by side for second, Rusinov coming back on the inside of Hansen who uses the traffic brilliantly around the outside of the 77 Porsche, leaving Rusinov with nowhere to go but off the throttle and Julian Canal is right there as well. Hansen makes good his escape, he's in second. 
And here's where the pass started. Look how close they get to the GT cars in front. I don't think Rusinov defended because I don't think he thought there was room for Hansen to get in front of him and not hit the Ferrari. Phil Hansen thought otherwise, but look at the rate of closing. That was a good move. Rory Pentadon, sixth place for Graf, flashing the headlights, this LMP3 battle. They're behind a lapped car, Rob Hodes is a lap down. Mattia Passini, ex Moto GP ace for Inter Europol competition number 14, and Martin Hipper, his teammate, right behind. And Rob Hodes gets in the way, holds up. Rory Pentanen, he gets eased out wide, elbows out past there from Mattia Passini. Pentanen out wide again, dirt on the tyres, and through goes Martin Hipper. So Rory Pentanen losing two spots there and very nearly a third. Louis Delatraz is our race leader, shares with Robert Kubica and Yipe Ye in this Team WRT entry. 11 seconds plus ahead of Phil Hanson. That's a good early lead for the Swiss whose dad, Jean-Denis Delatraz, raced in Formula One and a lot of sports cars and GTs. And Roman Rusinov after the drive-through penalty in third place, and he is struggling to hang on ahead of Julian Canal. What advice from the team? Hey, Raymond, try and do your best. Try and do your best. Well, I'm sure that's definitely helped there. Rusinov will possibly have thought of that on his own, but the gap is coming down. Change for third place in LMP3 here. Mike Benham, RLR M Sport, being dive bombed by Alessandro Bressan for Villorba course. And the same attempt from Julian Canal, blocked at the last minute into turn one by Roman Rusinov, who hangs on to third place still. Pierre Sonsinena for the Innovative Class Association SRT41 team. Frederick Sose's crew will be at Le Mans with disabled drivers Takuma Aoki and Nigel Bailly. New livery for Algarve Pro. This is Diego Menchaca of Mexico in the 24 car in the pits for examination. Checking around the back as he has his pit stop, shares with Richard Bradley and Ferdinand Habsburg. And into the pits, John Falp in the second, the number 25 G Drive Aurus. And he hands over to Pietro Fittipaldi, the grandson of the great MO. Rian Jade of Portugal is the third driver of that car. Phil Hansen is in at United Autosports, in from second. And Roman Rusinov comes in from third to hand over to his Argentine co-driver, Franco Colopinto. So both G-Drive cars now making their first stops and driver changes. Antonin Borca, the Swiss, is in at Cool Racing, the 37 car. See the Pro-Am logo on the side. And here is the leader, Louis Delatraz. Team WRT, quick service. Trouble down here at turn 14. That's the number eight graph car turned around by the GTE leader, Paolo Ruberti. And there is the Iron Lynx car. It looks like he's got away with limited damage, if any. But the race director may think that that was not the best looking pass he's ever seen. Our LMP3 leader, meanwhile, DKR Engineering's number four car, Lawrence Hur in the pit, shares with Luxembourger Alan Berg, not the 1980s Group C Jaguar driver, Canadian Alan Berg. And more trouble at 14, Rodrigo Salas, the yellow JMW, Ferrari, and contact with Ryan DL, the multiple Daytona and Sebring winning IMSA driver, the Scott in the EDEX Sport car, number 17. Off goes the DKR machine, Team look pretty happy with that. Principal Kendi Jonclay. Tom Chloe of Racing Experience, number 12 car in the garage with the Belgian at the wheel. Looks like the bodywork coming off. And Sally Jolic for Racing Team Turkey, all in a spin. Spent the last few years driving Aston Martins, now in LMP2. Contact there with Rene Binder in the number 30 Duquesne Engineering machine. Driver change at Iron Lynx. Paolo Roberti is out. Claudio Schiavoni is in, his Italian teammate. Three Italians in a Ferrari. 
Rina Mastronardi now takes over the GTE lead in the number 80 Iron Lynx car. Started in front, Might even end his stint in front if he comes in next lap. 55 Spirit Race Ferrari in third, JMW Ferrari in fourth, 77 the best Porsche in fifth position. There is your GTE leader as of now. On board in the 93 car, Richard Leitz. He also races in the World Endurance Championship, joining the team here in the European Le Mans series, bringing a wealth of Porsche GT factory experience with him. Michael Fassbender has just done a 75 minute stint here. That pumps up the arms a bit before handing over to Leitz. Information to the pit lane, black and white flag, car 26 for the contact with car six at T9. Jimmy Bruni in the 77 Proton competition Porsche diving by Rodrigo Sales for fourth place in GTE. In close company, the LMP2 car finding a way through as well. And in LMP3, Martin Hipper and Mattia Passini go at it for third place. When teammates collide is not a story that any team manager likes to read. So keep it clean, boys. Here's our race leader. Six laps to go, Louis. Keep pushing. Pretty clear lap ahead. Always well, good to know it's a pretty clear lap ahead for Louis Delatraz and six laps before he stops. Now in traffic, here's an interesting battle. On the inside here, Paul Luc Chatin for EDEX Sport. Oh, contact with Franco Colapinto in the G-Drive car. Colapinto fifth or was, spins on the inside of those LMP3 cars. Paul Luc Chatin was trying to unlap himself there. Colapinto, the Argentine, perhaps didn't know that it wasn't for position. Watch what happens. Comes inside the Team Virage car, doesn't see the Edex Sport car coming. You can see the black nose on 28. That's from damage early on. That's why they're a lap down. And Colapinto losing time there. Colapinto pulled out without looking and made contact with the Edex Sport car. Lucky it wasn't a bigger accident. Both G-Drive cars in the pits, they're double stacked. 25 came in first, 26 came in, had to be pulled back. Now 25's trying to get out, misses the crew member, but can't avoid that loose wheel, or the wheel that was left on the apron. And that is not good news, unforgivable error. Drive through penalty car 26 for misplacing a wheel during a pit stop, causing danger to other cars in the pit lane. Race leader is in. Louis Delatraz hands over to Yifei Ye, the Chinese driver, the 2021 Asian Le Mans Series champion with G Drive Racing. And he has joined WRT for this new venture. And that means that Julian Canal, on a different strategy, is now the race leader for Panis Racing. Shares with Gabby Aubrey and Will Stevens. Really strong lineup as we saw last year. Number eight Graf car in trouble again. This time self-induced a lockup. Sebastian Page, the Swiss perhaps watching the mirrors and goes off into the gravel. Bit of rally crossing here. Jimmy Bruni for Proton competition all over the back of Claudio Schiavone for Iron Lynx. Inside the number 60 car, does he get the drive to go around the outside? Well, sort of, but Schiavone eases him further out wide. That's the battle for second in GTE. Bit of debris in the nose of Jimmy Bruni's Ferrari. Where did that come from? Well, the clue is right in front of you, or in front of him, as it happens. Gets in a little hot, hits the back of the Ferrari. Black and white flag, car 77. Black and white flag, car 77 for the contact with car 60. Whoa, drama for Ollie Hancock. TF Sport, 95 Aston, very wide across the gravel traps. Gets away with that. GT leader, Reno Mastronardi, the Iron Lynx number 80 car in the pit lane. Tire change for him. Takuma Aoki there. He's watching uh, Nigel Bailly, the SRT41 machine leading in the innovative car class. Fantastic effort by everybody to have this LMP2 machine out and running. Fourth place battle in LMP2. Franco Colapinto and Rene Binder. Binder with the green highlights for the Duquesne engineering team. 
And Colapinto trying to go the long way around the outside. Binder's been boxed in behind these two LMP3 cars. Good anticipation by Colapinto. Had a little wiggle on the curbs there under acceleration, but he's made the pass stick. Rui Andrade for G-Drive down the inside of Alexandre Coigny for cool racing. Contact with the 37 car who goes around. Stay focused, says his team. No traffic, everything will be fine. Go, Alex. I'm sure he will. Looks like no damage on the car, which is very good news for them. Matt Griffin with damage, though. Left rear puncture on the Spirit of Race Ferrari. Was in fifth position as he came into the pit lane. Ferrari having a strong race so far. And in the pits, the number four car, DKR Engineering, driver change. Alain Berg, the Luxemburger, takes over from his German teammate, Lawrence Hoare. Jimmy Bruni leading from Matteo Cressoni by inches. Cressoni down the inside for the GTE lead. Tighter line, can he stay on the power? Back comes the Porsche underneath him, but through he goes. That's a great bit of work there by Matteo Cressoni. Jimmy Bruni, Porsche professional, ex-Ferrari pro of course. Now he brings the car in to hand over to Christian Reed, the team boss at Proton. Eighth place battle in LMP2. Alex Quiney being dive bomb cleanly this time by Richard Bradley in relivery to Algarve Pro Racing Machine. Gone are the turquoise colours that we're used to. And battle for second in LMP2. Tom Gamble, United Autosports. Puts one over on Will Stevens in a Panis racing car. Drifts out a little wide though. Trying to pick up the throttle nice and early. Stevens stays there and retakes the spot back up to second. That gets in deep. That'll compromise his exit. Duquesne's Rene Binder with behind him Jean Baptiste Lahaye for ultimate. It's the battle for fifth position. Lots going on at this stage of the race. And Jean Baptiste goes by, picks up a place from Rene Binder. That will put him into the hunt for fourth place. Tom Gamble for United versus Nick de Vries. Goes the long way around the outside of the Dutchman in the G-Drive car, but not enough overlap there into turn one. Nick de Vries hanging on. Different strategies coming into play throughout the race. And here again comes Tom Gamble. Quite a lot quicker than De Vries on the last couple of laps. Struggling to get by for third place. Now he's got the traction he needs and through he goes. That was a good clean pass on a quality driver like Nick De Vries. Good job. Tom Gamble really flying. Third place and closing on the race leader, Yifi Ye in the WRT machine. Gamble a lap down, but determined not to give away any speed by being held up by the leader. Through he goes. So he's on the same lap as the leader now and still driving quickly. P3 battle in GTE. 66 Andrea Fontana for JMW. Matt Griffin after that puncture. Spirit of Race car picks up the spot. Battle for fifth place in LMP3, 13 is Julian Falquero now for inter Europol competition. Alex Capadia right behind him. There's another slower LMP3 car in front. And down to the chicane, Capadia lunges straight in, block pass. Good move. Patrick Pile for Edex Sport. Replay on the straight here of him trying to go the long way around the outside of Richard Bradley. Wow! Look at the way he rolled off the brake and found a bit more pace between the two apexes. Michelle Gatting handing over the Iron Dames Ferrari 83 to Rahel Frey, her Swiss co driver. And 77 is in. Christian Reed. Tires and fuel for him. No driver change. Second in GTE behind the 80 Iron Lynx Ferrari. WRT still leading here into the final hour in Barcelona. Yifei Ye for China at the wheel. And the 41 machine has had a pretty impressive race so far. Probably shouldn't be surprised. We know WRT of old, they do run a superb operation. 
Here is our LMP2 battle for fourth place. GE drives Nick de Vries under the cosh now from Ultimate's Mathieu Lahey in the 29 car. So the young Dutchman. Oh, underneath him comes Lahey. He finds enough room, boxes in de Vries, or tries to and succeeds behind the Iron Dames Ferrari. A little bit of contact there. Alain Berg from Luxembourg leading for DKR in LMP3. And driver changes just about to happen here for Robert Kubica. Still think about the steering wheel for Robert. So think about the steering wheel for Robert is the message to Yifi Ye. So it's not just seat insert. Of course, since his uh, big rally crash, Got a, a weakened arm, but his first European endurance racing stint is about to start with a full fat driver change for Robert Kubica. Will Stevens for Panis in from second place, handing over to Gabby Aubrey, who's replacing James Allen, the Aussie, this weekend. Michael Fassbender chatting with Richard Leitz. And here's another WEC driver, Miguel Molina, Ferrari factory star, leading the race in the 80 Iron Lynx Ferrari by a lap from the 77 Porsche. Looking back from the 93 car, here is the battle between Patrick Pile and Jonathan Aberdyne for United Autosports, the South African. Coming in from DTM, Pile around the outside. Former GT racer now turned LMP2 endurance star. Pile puts in a good move there. 28 recovery drive continues. 22 car down to fourth place. Still in with the podium shout. Oh, squeezing around the JMW Ferrari there, the two of them. Rahel Frey for Iron Lynx. And Felipe Lazer from Germany in the Proton Competition 93 car right in front. Iron Lynx car still with three lights on the side. Though this is not the battle for second. There's the car that Michael Fassbender started. And Rahel uses all of her racing experience to good effect. Dies through on the inside, picks up the spot. So she is now up to fifth position. G-Drive versus Duquesne. And this is Tristan Gomedy in the number 30 car with Nick de Vries closing from behind. Again, the different pit stop strategies playing out in all sorts of ways. Sometimes you seem slow, sometimes you seem quick. And the G-Drive car back up to fifth. Alan Berg for DKR here. Number four car in traffic. And down the inside comes Cool Racing's Matt Bell. The 19 car goes through, followed by the United car. Robert Kubica leading the race. 24 seconds is the advantage now over Gabby Aubrey in the uh, Panis Racing Machine. Ultimate versus G Drive. And Ultimate hangs on. Mathieu Lahaye. Oh no, Nick de Vries goes the long way around the outside. Well, he sold the dummy to Lahey, who braked too deep into turn one, couldn't hold the line he wanted. And there's trouble, Fabian Leven, MV2S Racing. He's gone off, has he lost a wheel? Has he got a puncture or a breakage? Marshall say no go, Sunbeam. Louis Delatraz, fingers crossed, teammate Robert Kubica in his first ever European endurance race is heading towards the chequered flag as the race leader. What a great start for WRT. What a great start for the driver combination. What a great way to begin an endurance career for Robert Kubica. Into the final corners. The chequered flag awaits. His first endurance race, his first win. The four hours of Barcelona goes to Team WRT on their debut. Kubica, Delachaz, Ye, all rookies in MP2 in the cap you saw Vincent Voss, not a rookie in any way. Matt Bell and Cool Racing are going to claim their first European Le Mans Series victory. 
Nicola Marlini and Nicholas Croyton, the teammates. The checkered flag also waves for Miguel Molina. The Spaniards' ELMS comeback will be a success. He goes around the slow JMW car and he claims the GTE win. So victory for the 80 Iron Lynx Ferrari. Miguel Molina, Matteo Cressoni and Reno Mascionardi. Robert Kubica heads to victory circle. It is the win in Barcelona for Team WRT. 15th place overall, Cool Racing claim victory in LMP3. And our GTE winners, the number 80 Iron Lynx Ferrari in 23rd spot. The Association SRT41 innovative car finished in 34th place after a strong showing. Well, what a race for WRT. Van Sam Vos there, the team boss in the cap with Yiffa Ye, Louis Delatraz, and the man who brought it home, Robert Kubica. It means a lot to us, to the team as well. I think everyone did a really good job. We prepared hard, it was never going to be easy, but I mean, we had a good quality, good start. I could take the lead, and then, I mean, everyone did a perfect job. So I think that's a good way to start the season. So really, uh, thank you to everyone. As our winners head out into the sunshine, they join third place United Autosports 22 team, Tom Gamble, Jonathan Aberdyne and Phil Hansen, Will Stevens, Julian Canal and Gabriel Aubrey in for James Allen, who tested positive, finished second. But Robert Kubica, Louis Delachaz and Yiffa Ye claim the win and the early season points lead for Team WRT. In fifth, the 29 Ultimate car, and that is our winner in the Pro-Am category. New for this season, Ultimate return after a year away, graduating from LMP3 and claim an LMP2 win on their debut. Well, uh, it feels great uh, for our first race, especially that uh, last year we didn't race at all. So we come back uh, as a LMP2 team and uh, we win the first race as pro so it's like a dream. Our winners, Mathieu and Jean-Baptiste Lahaye with Francois Herio. Second, John Falp, Rui Andrade and Pietro Fittipaldi from G-Drive. And Cool Racing's Antonin Borga, Nico Lapierre and Alexandre Quagny complete the podium as Ultimate lead the Pro-Am points chase. The GTE victory went to the number 80 Iron Lynx Ferrari. Delight for Miguel Molina with a win at home in Spain. Not too bad. Amazing job uh, from the team. Uh, how I can say, with uh, two teammates like this, Reno super fast, Miguel even more. We had a puncture, honestly, we are a little bit lucky, uh, but uh, anyway, we, we, it's the result that uh, we deserve. Joining Miguel Molina, Matteo Cressoni and Reno Mastronardi on the podium, the runners-up Christian Reed, Jimmy Bruni and Jackson Evans for Proton Competition. Matt Griffin, Duncan Cameron and David Perel for Spirit of Race. And Iron Lynx head the championship table ahead of the Proton Porsche team. In LMP3, Cool Racing celebrate the number 19 crew. Matt Bell, Nicola Maulini and Nicholas Croydon claim victory. It was a tough, tough, tough race here. Tyre management was uh, the, the biggest part of it, and our uh, front tyres were absolutely gone uh, in those last 20 minutes. So I was just kind of trying to manage pace, manage traffic. But these guys set me up, got me to the front, and I was able to hold off the challenge, and we brought it home. Really happy. Joining our winners, Matt Bell, Nicola Maulini, and Nicholas Croydon. Runners up, RLR M Sports, Alex Capardia, Mike Benham, and Malte Jakobsen. And in third place, Martin Hipper, Julian Falquero and Ugo de Vilda from Inter-Europol competition. A great start to the season for all three teams. They are at the top of the point standings as we head away from Barcelona. First choice is from LMP2. This is Franco Colapinto in the red and black number 26 G drive car chasing down the green and black Duquesne engineering machine of Rene Binder. Binder held up by slower LMP3 machinery. 
Quick thinking sees Colapinto box him in, drive round the outside, hold a moment on the kerbs and seal the position. Your second choice is the LMP2 lead battle. Louis Delachaz for WRT. Rookies chasing Roman Rusinov and G-Drive down the straight. Both know Delachaz must go inside. Rusinov barely leaves him room. Two wheels on the grass and the runoff. But the Swiss forces his Russian rival to break too late and too deep and grabs the lead. GTE now, and this is an absolute classic Barcelona move. Rahel Frey has set it up several corners before. Dives down the inside into the hairpin, turn seven, eight combination. As the Porsche takes the racing line, Felipe Lazer sees that the Ferrari has gone right by him. Go to the ELMS Facebook official page and vote. That's it for Barcelona. Next time, we're in Austria. The European Le Mans series bursts back into life here in Spielberg in the Styrian Mountain. The red bull ring and all of a sudden the grid explodes into action for That was all very unnecessary.